Schematic view is the easiest to draw because everything is just simple line drawings. You may say this is a bit hard to draw, but if you think about it, all these common parts have already all been drawn, so you'll probably only be drawing rectangles with pins. In this video, we'll continue with the IC we made in the other video, and we'll make this IC picture from scratch. On a side note, you'll probably never be making a part from scratch because you can just take a view from another part because schematic views are pretty generic and then you can just use that or modify it and then use that but very rarely you'll be making something from scratch actually this is my first one so we'll go to Inkscape just before we go on I'll mention that I'm going to make mistakes in this because you learn more from fixing errors than actually doing so just be aware of that in Inkscape we'll zoom in and have the bottom corner clearly visible and we'll set our grid now if you go back to fritzing everything in the schematic view is on a hundred thousand square grid so we'll duplicate that in our document so file document properties new change to inches we'll go point 0.1 and point 0.1 We'll keep in the major grid lines as that will quickly help us work out the size of a part. Close that. Now we'll draw the body of our part. So we pick square. And we'll click on a point and drag. It's 5 units, 10 units, or 3. Now we'll set the stroke, hold the shift down. Black. Go to stroke style. 0.25. Next, we'll draw the pins. We pick pencil. We'll click on an intersection point. Drag it to another intersection point. Next, we'll set the color. We'll hold the shift key down. And in Fritzing, they use silver pins, so we'll be using a grey. Just have a play which one you like the best. Now we'll set the stroke width. Again, 0.25. Now we'll go to Arrow Select because we want to duplicate this. We'll right click on it, duplicate, we'll drag it up and it'll snap. You can du duplicate in the XML editor also. You have your path, just press duplicate, pick it up, move it. It'll be quicker here going duplicate like this. Again, you can also look at the duplicate is a control D. So if you just control D it, just pick it up and drag it. Control D, it's even quicker. Oops, we've gone one pin too many, so we'll just control Z to delete that one. We will use the arrows select on our rectangle and drag it down. Make sure you have snap to grids on. We click back on our pin and we just go Control D and you can just drag that across. Control D. And that's about it. Now we'll resize the page to the part. So edit, select all, edit, resize the page select. While we have it select all, we will uh, now go object and group. Here's the group here. We'll rename this schematic. Set. Now we'll save the part, file, save as, I see, test schematic 1, plane, save. Now we'll go back to Fritzing. In chapter 5.5 we found out the generic IC didn't like our drawing, so we went and got another 16 dip. 
loaded our PCB image and it was fine with it. Right click, edit, no problems. We'll be using this one from now on because the IC one will cause too much problems later on. Coming to the schematic view, we have to change this for the one we just made. So we'll right click edit, go to our schematic, and now we'll load image, the one we just made, schematic one. And that's our image now loaded in. We just have to assign the pins. We won't worry about the names because we'll be changing. It'll be a good example on how to change them later. So we do the usual click on the thing, select graphic, pick that one and go west. And I'll just fast forward the rest. And the last one, click, select graphic, east. Now we'll save that. Close that. We'll bring our part on board. Here we have a Fritzing has crashed error. This can happen if there are other cases of Fritzing open. So always try to edit with just the one part window open. Thankfully on reopening it remembered our assignments. This is our VCC pin, which is correct. Now let's go back to Inkscape and see if we can add even more. In Inkscape we're going to auto assign the pins like we did in PCB view by naming them. So we node select, we select this one here, it's this one here, so we click on it, change the name to connector, zero pin, we'll copy that because we're pasting it to the others, we'll set that, and we'll go to the second pin. It's correct, rename, And I'll fast forward the rest. That's all our connectors named. Um, if you want to be neat, you can put them in order, but we won't in this case. Try to keep your pins on the lower section of your XML editor and your superfluous stuff at the top, because this raises the pins a bit higher than the rest. So we'll now save this. We'll call this number two. Plain. Save. Now we'll import into, uh, into Fitzing. Again, we right click edit, schematic, file, load image, we want our number two. All the pins are auto assigned. Just check that, this is number 16, this is number one. But you'll now notice that the, the crosshair is in the middle of the node, so we have to put it on to the end. So we have to go into select the pin and then west on the left hand side and right east on the right hand side. I'll just fast forward that. Now we'll save that. OK, save. And there's our IC. Now we put a connector from here to here. Works fine. Put a connector from here to here doesn't work fine. Well I did this on purpose, I left two of the connectors with the crosshairs in the middle just to show you what can happen. So we'll go back and edit that. Select the graphic, east, select the graphic, east, save, OK. Now it's assigned to the ends. Now let's go back to Inkscape and add some text. The first thing we have to do is ungroup schematic. Uh, the reason why, these are childs of the parent schematic. If we move this out of its schematic group, as an example, it can move far away because this is restricting that part. So we'll put that back and we'll ungroup it all, so we'll select select schematic object ungroup this is so when we add our text we can all group it in one hit and not have that sudden shift problem 
of the child inside the parent. Now, the thing about text in Fritzing is it only accepts two fonts. So you have to go to the Fritzing page and we find out that they have Droid Sans and Orca. Here is the download file. You download that, then you come to the fonts and template download uh, zip, click on it, go to the fonts, and then you can just pick a font, double click on it, and just press install, and it'll install in Windows. You can do that for all of the fonts that are in there just in case. Back to Inkscape. Right now, move that aside. We'll go text, text and fonts. Now here we'll set the fonts that are we've just installed. We'll go to Orca. Be careful, there's two. Just take this one, Orca. Set as default. We can close that. Now, we'll click on text, and it says Sans Serif. But we'll click on here and now we've got our orca and it's the height of this the height of this is the size here and it looks about right now we'll come here and we'll click on it and we see it's clicking to a grid so we'll have to turn off our grids and our cusp grids and we'll click it a bit lower that looks fine put a one in there now in fritzing they also want a silver color the same as the pin so we'll just select one. Don't like that one, just take the next one. And that looks about right. We'll go arrow select. We'll just move that where we want it. So it looks nice. Now, if we just click down here and then keep typing in letters, they'll all be crooked. So the way to keep them straight is you open the text editor here. You have your piece of text, just duplicate that. Come here, change this to a unit you know, we're using inches, and here subtract 100 thou. And then come into this text box where it's 1, change it to the number you want. Now if you put an enter in there, see how it'll double, double uh, quotation marks? Just, just go back one. This is live, whatever you type in here happens instantaneously. And then we'll just re keep repeating that. I'll fast forward the rest. Okay, that's our eight in a nice neat row. Now we'll arrow select and box them. We'll now go to duplicate. And here we'll move them but using this. Now each box is 100 thou, so it looks like it needs to move 100, 200 thou. So we'll just move that to there. Looks like it needs a bit more. Now we'll go into our XML editor again. And here we'll open up each one of these and change it to what the appropriate number is. I'll fast forward this next bit. Okay, that's our other numbers. Uh, if we have to move them a touch, we'll just box select them as usual and use the XY coordinates. Uh, here, the number 9 looks a little bit out. So we'll click on that and we'll move it another 20. There. And that looks better. Let's now look at the XML editor because there's been a mistake. Here, all these nodes here are in a group of layer 1. We haven't actually ungrouped everything down to the base before we started. So we'll select layer and go object, ungroup. Now we'll go edit, select all. Then we'll go object group. Now here's our group. We'll click on that and we'll call it schematic. And set. And now they're all in one group. Now we'll save that. File, save as, change this to 3, plane, we'll save that, and off to Fritzing again. Now we'll right click on this, edit, schematic, 
file, load image, and number three file. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is all the fonts are tiny. This is a mannerism of Inkscape. It adds a PX unit to all the fonts in it. And you have to manually go in and take out all the PXs in the drawing. So we find our file, we right click on it, we open with WordPad. Now here we have to search down for all the, all the text. See these are path, these are our lines. And here is our first text. We'll come along the line and the first two instances of PX we have to remove. We have to continue that down with all the text entries. I'll fast forward this bit. And the last one. Then we hit save. Close this. Now we come back to our edit. We'll load that image, which will be the same name. And all our fonts are large again. So we go File, Save. And that's our schematic view. Now we'll just join a wire from here to here. And can you see our mistake? We forgot to assign the end of the pins. So we'll have to go back into Edit. Schematic. Select the graphic. West for the left ones, east for the right ones. And I'll fast forward the rest. That's it, no more crosshairs, so we've saved that. And our connections are now to the end of the pins. Let's now look at other problems you might see. Now here we have our parts. We have this, it's a normal rectified di diode. See how it snaps nicely. This is a Xena diode. See how it snaps half, half a grid out. There's something on there that's making it half a grid out. Now if we put a link to it, let's see if we can see what it is. Well, it's something right about here in the middle of the pin. So we'll right click on that, we'll edit. The first thing we see in schematic drawing is the pin assignments look wrong. So we'll click on a graphic, select east, click on this graphic, select west, and we'll save it as new part. Come to my bin, now it snaps properly. Other things you might see is the pins here aren't red. Now the red is a good indication if something is connected. Like if you connect something to itself, it will stay red. But if you connect it to another part, it will go to green so you know it's connected. You can see the green on this one here, so it does have an indication when it's connected. But generally, most parts have a red connector on the end there. Other things you might see is this stepper. Way out of proportion. That's one problem. But if you look at the pin ends, it's got a red tip. What they do is put a zero stroke square on the end of each pin. And if you give it the connector pin name, it will automatically assign itself and it will be red. This saves assigning an end of a pin if you've got a long pin. You can do it in the actual drawing first. And that covers schematic drawing.